Hello, Tide fans. Welcome to Tide Talk. I'm your host, Sean Taylor, here with my big brother, Sheriff Taylor. Not, not used to coming off of a loss during the regular season anyway, um, but we're coming off of um, a tough loss to LSU. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I, I made the comment for the past couple of weeks that, you know, if LSU comes into Alabama, comes into Tuscaloosa, and beats us at home, that I would, you know, tip my hat. I would say that they are better than what I anticipated. I think that they did show me more than what I had seen in the past, you know, seven games, eight games for them. Um, I was very impressed with uh, just their mentality. You know, they talked a lot prior to coming into that game just about their confidence. Right. They played they would. played with a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was very impressed with Joe Burrows and man, what a what a difference in a year. You know, you go back and look at his stats and I looked at them a little bit from the previous year. I mean, their stats as a team, you know, we go into their place number one, they're number four, we beat them twenty nine nothing. He's the starting quarterback. But I mean, I think he had 180 yards passing, and you know, but man, the difference in one year, and and so I am saying it on the air that they were better than what I anticipated. What's your What's your thought? I I mean, um, I felt like they were playing well when they came into Tuscaloosa. Um, they had had a couple of big wins and had gotten a lot of confidence on that. Um, but Joe Burrows, man, he, he played a great game, and there's nothing you can take away from him. And, you know, uh, I think we didn't help ourselves in a lot of, lot of ways early on, and it, we got behind the eight ball. But, but you can't take nothing away from, from LSU. They, they played good defensively. Um, they played good offensively he threw the ball all over the place they ran the ball up the middle um when they needed to when they needed to i mean i i you know our young linebackers got exposed this weekend by lsu i mean our you know our linebackers got exposed in the run game this weekend and from different looks um and you know different formations and and you could tell, you could see that. Yeah, you could see the inexperience. And I'm going to tell you, I don't believe it was just, to be honest, I don't believe it was just our linebackers that got exposed. I, I think our entire defense got exposed. I mean, if you take a look at what transpired, you take a look at how they approached the game, you, you, you didn't hear a lot about Terrell Lewis. I look no. back at his stats today. He had he, three tackles. Yeah, he he ran by everybody. Um, he was running by everybody. And and they did a good. Joe Burrows did a good job stepping up in the pocket, buying himself some time. So I, you know, I don't want to blame. You know, I'm not blaming anybody. They outplayed us, and I also believe they outcoached us. But I also think it was the defense as a whole. Mm -hmm. I, it's tough to just point to the inexperience of our linebackers. Granted, that is true. However, you know, they did things when, when we did stuff well, when, when we would get to him, he would get rid of the football so fast and, and they had a very good game plan yeah. coming in to Tuscaloosa, preparing for what they were going to see from us. And Well, you could tell that they had – the mindset of if two is playing, we're going to make him run. We're going to make him get out of the pocket. We're going to make him take hits. We're going to get after him if he's playing. They're not going to let him sit in the, the pocket and throw the ball. And that's exactly, you know, a few times we had a good pocket, but for the most part, you know, they were after him the whole game. And I think that was their game plan. Keep him on the run. Uh, make him take some licks and see if they can get him, you know, sore. And, of course, they did. He didn't leave the game, but, I mean, he was definitely in some visible discomfort at the end of the game. Yeah, listen, I, 
you know, I thought we did some things really well offensively. I, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of that. There's so much to break down in this game, um, you know, with respect to, you know, what we've said all along, penalties at a bad time, turnovers. We, we led the nation in, in turnover margin. And, and then on that first drive, you know, two plays, 51 yards, and we're in scoring position, you know. But then it's what I've said before, and, and, and I don't know if that's something that the team will address, that Sarkeesian and Saban will address, but we have struggled once we got into the red zone, we've slowed down. Man, if we score outside the red zone, man, we can score quick. And that's obvious, you know, big plays. But we have struggled when we get in the red zone and it seems like we lose momentum or, you know, we run it up the middle and get stuffed and then we do something, you know, try to do something else and it's incomplete or whatever. Now we're looking just like let's pass third and eight. Now, granted, we don't we rarely see Tua put the ball on the ground. Not sure exactly what happened. Maybe it was excitement. Maybe it was adrenaline. You know, he swaps over to the correct hand. We got a blocker out in front of him, you know, and he drops the ball. Again, that's one of those things. But it's the fact that we slow down offensively for whatever reason once we get inside the red zone. And that, come, you know, coming out this game, that, that bit us in the rear end. Yeah. You know, not only do we not score, but they get the fumble, drive down, and that's a 14-point swing. Well, and look, Najee ran his tail off. And I think the front offensive line played a lot better than they have in the, the previous games. I, I wasn't upset with our running game. I mean, we scored 41 points. Anytime we score 41 points, we're supposed to win. And, you know, we knew it was going to be a shootout, or we felt like it was. They can score. But, man, we just couldn't stop them. Um, one of the things that I think is really key, and maybe it's injuries, but I think that we have missed so many tackles in that game that it wasn't it, it was terrible. And the, the, the key tackle that I think is is key to the whole game is we're down uh, five, I think, and, and they throw an out pass to, to the running back, number 22, on the sideline, third and ten. Yeah. After we score, we get within five or six. They throw the out pass. And it really wasn't even an out pass. It was get rid of it because – Yeah, he, he was the fall guy. Yeah. I mean, he was the, the you yeah, know, it was, default guy. It was – the guy's in my face, let yeah. me get rid of it. But here's the, you know, and you're right. That To me, I was saying this, that was the, that was the play of the game. It was. And we hit him at, with four yards. It, I mean, I think he got, he caught the ball with five, took a step, and we hit him. And he drove, and he, drive, he drug, drug us four yards yeah. and got a first down yeah. instead of Fourth and four, we hit him right there, tackle him right there. It's fourth and four. They punt the ball, or, and or we go down and, and – yeah. Well, no, they were um, – at that it, point, we were right at the 50. They wouldn't have kicked the field inside, goal. It was inside the 30. Not mm, – inside the 30. But, but my, to your point, we didn't even get to see what would happen because he picks up the first down. Yeah. I mean, and I – Nick Saban even mentioned that. He was like, we did a poor job tackling, and he, you know, gave credit to – you know the running back that we we hit him four yards short and he drives for a first down. That that's all part of the conversation. We're we're you know there, again a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to break down about this game. Let's take a quick break um, on behalf of Bob English and State Farm, and uh, we'll be right back and discuss some of that. Um, roll Tide. Enjoy the good times a little more with the right plan. As your State Farm agent, I am here to help you protect your dreams and loved ones with life insurance. With over 60 years combined State Farm experience, call me or any of my team to find out which options are best for you. Another way we're here to help life go right. All right, welcome back, Todd fans. We were just talking just about all the things that happened in that game. So many things that happened. Let's, let's, let's address this. 
This what I told a buddy of mine, I sure would have loved to have seen us play a cleaner first half and see how that game turns out. Now, that's part of football. Sure. Man, I am not suggesting by any means or taking anything away from LSU by any stretch. But I would have loved to have seen us play a cleaner first half and see how that game shakes out. You know, you mentioned before we started rolling, you know, we're down three with four and a half minutes to go in the half. 13-16. And we end up down 20. And, Thir- and man, 33 13. you know, what a turn of events. I mean, to try and overcome against a team that you're already struggling stopping offensively. You you know you're already having some issues there. Yeah. And it's it's a battle, but then we make the mistakes, you know, that on that, top of that it. we made. Yeah. You know, we talked a lot during the game, me, me and, and, and Jimmy, who's not here, and Maurice, of course, who's not here. By the way, we miss you guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Um, but, but you know, we everybody talked about when Nick Saban has two weeks to prepare, watch out, and that sort of – I just didn't see the preparation from, from Alabama. I, I mean, you know, and I agree with that 100%. I don't know what, what you attribute that to. Um, but it didn't look like we were – it looked just like last year's national title game. Yeah. We had, a month, a, lot of we had a month to prepare, and we looked completely unprepared. Right. We didn't look ready. We looked undisciplined. There were penalty after penalty, and, and we had a, a month to prepare, and now we had two weeks to prepare for this game, and – and we looked unprepared. I mean, it just wasn't um, what we're used to seeing from that perspective of when we have a, a long you know, time to prepare and then we come out and play and we look as bad as we do. Um, I was talking to, to Randy Knowles earlier and, uh, and Chip Corley and, and both of them were saying, you know, was it – A, Randy said, you know, you never know how it affects us when we aren't tackling well, but we have so many people hurt. How are we practicing now? How is how is Saban practicing? Are, are, we going, yeah, are we going through the motions because he don't want to get nobody else hurt? Um, and we've had so many injuries. And then, of course, Chip was saying, you know, um, did – LSU's three games of big games, did that prepare their players, their young players, a little bit. more than our young players? This this was the first game for our young kids, our freshmen, that were on the field, and that first half seemed to show that. And we settled down and came back and played a good second half. But that first half, how effective – was their yeah. first time, the presence their in the stadium. Their, There's, their yeah. stadium sold out three hours before the game. You know, it's it's the game of the century. It's being billed as all this, and it's they, they've never experienced that. That was their first time. LSU had had three opportunities to – to get that under yeah. their belt, you know, and 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 who knows? I mean, I don't have the the answer to that. I don't I don't know. But 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 that's why you go to Alabama. Yeah, you go I mean, to Alabama to play in that game. I know. You know, and I said the same thing. That but but how many games have we played like this? And of course, Randy said, "Yeah, but Heath, these kids have it. Yeah, They're that's young. Right. That's right. They're young. I, our experience is hurt. I mean, but if you take a look at the at the whole. If you take a look at the whole, I mean, look at some of the mistakes. The mistakes weren't necessary. I mean, what we could see visibly. We don't. I don't claim to know all the schemes and who missed a coverage. Right, right, right. Missed, but the things that we know were not necessarily inexperienced players. You know, Tua dropping the football yeah. inside the five or right at Judy. The five. You know, Judy dropping, dropping two passes. touchdown passes. Tua throwing an interception. Mm-hmm. You know, right before the half. Um, you know, Trayvon Diggs got picked on early. I mean, call and, it like you see, and he got picked on early and didn't tackle well late. Yeah, I mean, so trying to rip some the ball. Of the guys that that should have 
been able to play in that game a little better and perform a little better? Didn't. No doubt. So, again, I would have really liked to have seen a cleaner first half and seen how that game ends up. Man, we didn't have an answer for their offense. Regardless, I think it. I think we stopped them three times. In the second half, they had three, three and outs. And, and of course, you know, we, we scored four in a row. Um, so, so we had – we gave ourselves a chance, but when it counted, we did not have that, you know, guy that we we're so accustomed to that defensive stop that we're so used to getting. And, and they, we talked about that before on previous shows. It didn't look like we had a defensive plan to stop them. They kept throwing the ball in the middle of the field, Wide which open. is what which is what we do Wide with open. our slants. Not necessarily somebody and, hanging all over. And them. they were completely uncovered yeah and I, I couldn't understand that it didn't look like our defensive scheme was even remotely it, it, it prepared goes back, it goes back for, to for their for their deal with two weeks of preparation we didn't look very prepared mm. and so that was a little disappointing I'll, I'll tell you the uh, the few things and, and this didn't make or break but it's critical I was reading a little bit today about the Illegal touching, the pass right there before halftime. Yeah. I was reading a little bit about that today. Yeah, that's and terrible. Yeah, it's it's kind of still up in the air. I mean, I no one has an answer because I looked at the rule and and nobody said anything about this that night, but the rule states that that is a reviewable call. Illegal touching, the guy stepping out of bounds. Now, the whole question, but the question is, becomes, was he pushed? Yeah, is, if it's called on the field as being a push, then it's not reviewable. Right. Is but what they, I understand. If says, it wasn't called on the field, they can review it. The rule says that, and I read the rule, actually, I thought I had it on my phone. That's why I pulled it out, but I didn't have it. The rule says that they can actually make a call from the review. So, again, that's a critical play yeah, that hurt. in the game. Yeah. Gets them down to the half-yard line. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't want to be that Alabama fan. I'm not saying It's a great that, catch, regardless. That, <laughs> phenomenal catch I by mean, Randy Moss's son, by woo, the way. I mean, um, goodness gracious. Phenomenal catch without, with, without question. But, again, I didn't want to be that Alabama fan that's – because that didn't make or break the game, but it was critical yeah. at the moment and and assisted in another score. Not saying they wouldn't have scored anyway because we couldn't stop them, but, man, when you got it on the half-yard line, the chances are, are, are even better. So, uh, so many things happened in that first half. We go in at halftime down 20, and I'd like to have been a fly on the wall – to hear what Saban and the coaches had to say. You know, he says that he basically challenged the guys. And, he, you know, it looks like he did. It looks like some of them stepped up to the challenge. And so before we get into that, we're going we're gonna to take a break. We're going to come back and talk about the second half. We're going to talk about our guys stepping up to the challenge because it's all going to be relative to the conversation that we're also going to have, which everybody's talking about, do we get in? Mm -hmm. And so let's take a short break on behalf of Bob English and State Farm. Hold your seats, Tide fans. We'll be right back with Tide Talk. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. So make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money. And who doesn't like that? Just call me, Bob English, or any of my experienced hometown team and find out how you could start saving today. It's just another way. All right, welcome back, Tide fans. So we, we're right there at the break. We're talking about the, the challenge that Nick Saban gave the guys at, at halftime. And, and I'm sure, I, I like I said, I'd like to have been a fly on the wall to, to know what that you know, what that was like. If you heard Orgeron's post-game locker room speech, it was pretty animated, um, which, I, which I thought was, was pretty neat, actually, but um, not a lot of people took it that way. But I, I would have I'd liked to have heard what 
what Nick Saban said. I know that he did challenge the guys to say, hey, what, you know, what do you want out of this? Do you want to lay down and quit? Are we going to start trying to do some things correctly? We've made some mistakes. And, and of course, we win the second half. I mean, we win the second half 28-13. We come out and hit him in the mouth, and, and Najee Harris takes over in the second half. He was a beast. I mean, he, you know, he finishes with 190 total yards you know, on 19 carries. Um, I think he had 148 on the ground, and he had 40, you know, two or whatever on, a, on that pass play touchdown. So, man, Najee Harris said, Coach, you know, it's me. Give, give it to me. And showed up that way. Now, our offensive line looked really good. Tua had a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I, I know that there are a couple of fourth down conversions, uh, some mm -hmm. long third down mm -hmm. where where he's sitting back there just looking and looking and looking mm -hmm. um, that were very critical in the game. Now, LSU wins the third down conversion rate. I think they were eight for 15. Um which which was not bad. We couldn't get them off the field. Uh, which was a key prior to going into the game. That's correct. And and we weren't awful, but we could have done much better. I think we were six of fifteen, if I remember looking at that correctly, yeah. on third down conversions, with three or four on fourth down conversions. So um we we obviously made some adjustments. Mm -hmm. We came out and played a much better second half. I'd have loved to have seen that team play first half that way and see what happens. Not saying that we win the game, but I'd love to, to have seen those two teams in the second half play for four quarters. Well, and, you know, look, I, the guy is phenomenal. He made some phenomenal catches. Really good. But Judy drops two touchdown passes that he never drops. We're not used to seeing. We're, he just never drops them. I mean, they hit him in the hands. It wasn't – Overextended. He it wasn't behind him. I mean, both of those yeah. passes were right in the bread basket, and and he drops them. And that's just not normal. Um, does that win the game? Who knows? But I, I just you know it's just things that occurred that were unusual. Yeah, and and fortunately for Judy, he does come back and make a big sure. touchdown catch no, in the corner. No doubt about bring it. Bring us within five. I mean, you know, listen. We, we have been spoiled, Alabama fans. We, we've been spoiled. I mean, we've had defensive that shut people out. Now we've got an offense that we're used to seeing big numbers and Jerry Judy and Devontae Smith and Ruggs and Waddle. And, and but one of the things that we talked about a minute ago, I didn't understand with 26 seconds, mm. we're on their end of the field. What, what are we doing? I mean, I get, I get you know, maybe – not just taking a knee, but you know we can't kick a field goal. I mean, you know, you're not trying to get into field goal range because we can't kick a field goal. Yeah. I mean, what are we doing right yeah. there when we threw that interception? Nick Saban took some took the blame for that. He said we basically we put the trust in Tua. Uh, we had two timeouts. You look for you look for a big play, and then if you can get a big play, you call a timeout. You know, and and, and go for the end see zone. If, see if you can see what happens. Um, maybe that's what he said. Maybe throw a deep ball. Yeah. And then that's just as good as a punt or a, you know yeah. turnover with no time I mean, on the clock or what have you. But well, I, he did take responsibility for that. But that was. The I just story. I was hoping that the thought process was not cross the fifty and try to kick a field goal. And here's what Nick Saban said. <laughs> Nick did say, you know. If I'd have known the way it was going to work out, he goes, I'd have ran the ball one time or took a knee. He goes, but I don't know that. You know, so hindsight being 2020, we would have yeah. ran the football one time, maybe try to get a big run, um, but we trusted our quarterback. And you know what? I'm okay with that. They were being aggressive. Uh, very, very poor decision by Tua. Um, but, but again, um, we made some adjustments, came out in the second half, which leads right into the conversation. Fortunately for us, we made it a, a, a close football game. Yep. You know, we lose by five. Yep. Um, first time in 31 games, home games, that we, we've lost. Um, last time was 2015 to Ole Miss. Um, I think that helps us as, it, as the conversation has already started, do we get in? So many things have to happen. Make no mistake about it. We are going to have to rely on some things happening. However... You know, Maurice and I, we were talking, you know, on text because Maurice is in Canada and we're talking about, 
you know, the, the committee's responsibility is to put the four best teams in the playoffs, mm -hmm. not the most tradition, not the history, the four best teams. Well, if you look at it right now, you can't sit there and say that Alabama is not one of the four best teams. Now, again, because we won't be playing in an SEC, barring any crazy things that happen with LSU, we won't play in an SEC championship game. Right. Okay. And we have to, as Nick Saban says, we got to take care of what we can control, which is we've got to win out. We got to beat Mississippi State this coming weekend. We got to win. I think it's Western Carolina, and then Auburn. We got to play Auburn at Auburn. Auburn. And the hope for us is Auburn beats Georgia this weekend because that looks better on our resume mm -hmm. if Auburn was to win. So, you know, there's some Alabama fans that's probably well, going to be pulling. And, and for listen, I, first of all, uh, I think it's probably doubtful that we're going to get put in. But if we do, here's what has to happen, in my opinion. LSU has to run the table, win the SEC. Auburn needs to beat Georgia, but it's not necessary. It Correct. will look better, better for us right. if Georgia loses to Auburn and then we beat Auburn. Auburn. That's right. But that don't have to That's happen. Right. We have to win out. LSU has to win the whole thing and go undefeated. We have to win out. And then if that occurs... There's a possibility. There's a possibility. If if Auburn were to beat Georgia, and then obviously we beat Auburn, and then LSU wins the SEC, that's our best sure. road sure. to the playoff. That's right. I don't know that we're going to get much benefit of the doubt this year, only because we've been there every year, and they just – seem to be but that's that's what we just talked about though the committee's responsibility i know what the committee's responsibility the is but that but the but it appears that the committee is also giving some lashes to people who don't have a tough schedule like clemson they're they're telling clemson you better go out and play somebody worth a dang because we're not just going to put you in because you haven't lost. Yeah, but Clemson's sitting in at number three right now. So. No doubt about it. And but they, and they, but they were number five. Schedule, but they them. were number five when it came out from the committee, and the committee is sending a message that says just because you were there last year and you're undefeated don't mean anything. You've got to play somebody for it to mean well, something. And that's right. And I think what they're saying is, you know, look, they struggled against an unranked North Carolina team. Mm -hmm. They should have lost with all, all rights, Yep. everything being equal, they should have lost to North Carolina. Right. So, I, you know, they're not saying because you were there last year, you were putting you at five. They're saying they didn't think that they were in the top five. They, they were the, you know, top four best teams. But but things will take place. Penn, well, what know, I'm Penn saying State is, is our our schedule is what we've heard for years. We don't have a marquee win right now. Our marquee win for this season will be Auburn. It it hasn't there. Our other SEC wins, everybody's discounting. But here, here so, here's you know, the thing, and, and and you know, again, this could be a, another show in itself <laughs> because. Our schedule is what it is. Yeah, Nick I mean, Saban will tell you who's who, hey, we'll play anybody. Come play us, but people aren't scheduling Alabama. Right. We we can't get every, any, just anyone. So our same with Clemson, I'm is, sure. That's right. Our schedule is what it is. We have no, you know, when we played Florida State, the first game of the year, you know, and they were number and they were number two. two or three. I mean, you know, we scheduled them. Before we knew what they were, they were ranked in the country. Yeah. So, so uh, again, our schedule is what it is. Here's what people do know. It's already been talked about. 
What happens when Alabama gets a second chance? They're already talking about it. Right. They're already referencing well, 2011 when LSU beat us nine to six in overtime, and then we come back and beat them 21, 21 to, to nothing. nothing. Right. They're already saying you don't give Alabama two chances. So, are you? You can't tell me that from a ratings perspective, from a viewing perspective, from a money perspective that everybody in the country would not like to see an LSU versus Alabama. Well, I, I, well, I mean, we talked about that today with, with the, my friends, but I, in the South, I think, yes, that would be a, a great rematch. Up North, they don't care about it. Up North, that's I the think they're going to they're gonna want everybody else to get a chance, and that's what's going to potentially hurt us. Yeah, but but the committee is made up of people other than sports writers, and they their responsibility is to put the four best teams, yeah. bottom line. So, you know what? We don't get to decide that. We can talk about it all day long. We'll see what happens tomorrow night when it comes out that's and right. where we stand. That's right. And so far in the AP poll and the coaches poll, we're number four. That's got to have an impact. So, uh, here's what we got to do. We got to win this coming weekend against Mississippi State. Mississippi State struggling a little bit this year. However, Nick Saban says it presents a challenge because they're always physical. Mm -hmm. They always play a tough game at home. We're on the road. He he. Does said, Tua play? He do said. You arrest him. He said that he is interested to see how our guys respond after a big loss. I think Tua plays because that sends a message that we're not just. Play well, I heard game. he said he was okay. He was sore, but he's yeah. fine. So I think he plays. He may not play the whole time, but I think he plays. You think and he starts and yeah. Matt and comes in and relieves. We come out as a three-touchdown favorite. We're 21-point favorite. Um, so we got to take care of business, and then we'll see what happens. We, we haven't lost to Mississippi State since 2007. Um, it's not likely that we lose to them, but anything happens in the SEC. We've seen that. Um, South Carolina beating Georgia, as an example. So – uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see how the, the playoffs, you know, polls come out. And they come out tomorrow night. So, um, we'll see. But thanks for being on the show, brother. Got it. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll be right here again next week on Channel 7 and 207 after um, the Mississippi State and Alabama games. So, uh, see you right here next week. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.